in many cases of practical interest, not just one phase of fluid is flowing through a porous medium. You can think, for example, of oil recovery. Water and oil are then flowing simultaneously through a rock. Or you can think of gas and water flowing together. This can become a very complicated problem. However, if these two phases are ismissible, so if they do not mix, then they are basically just in each other's way when they are flowing. This can be modeled using so-called relative permeabilities. You will see those in this video. So what do we have? Again, we have our rock with our grains, with some space in between, and I just put the water below and the oil on top of that. But of course, that's not how it looks in reality. And then uh, they're uh, uh, more uh, mixed with each other. Uh, we have our water saturation, SW, the fraction of the void space occupied by water, and we have our oil saturation, SO, uh, the fraction of void space occupied by oil. And the sum of those is one, of course, some of those two fractions. And now we wonder, what about their uh, velocities? What about their Darcy velocities? Now, we uh, use the volumetric velocity, um, and in order to model that, we can use Darcy's law, uh, which is a, a phenomenological law, as we saw, but also derived from Stokes equations. So what do we have then? Well, the water velocity, the velocity of the water phase, equals uh, minus k of mu water times the gradients of the uh, water pressure, times some krw, times some function krw, which is called the relative permeability of water which tells you basically the contribution uh, of the uh, water flow through the to the total flow. Similarly for oil, we say, okay, the uh, velocity of the oil phase, or the volumetric velocity of the oil phase, so what's that? Uh, we use the oil pressure then, and again the K of mu, but now we need the KRO, the relative permeability of oil. And then the total velocity is just the sum of the two. So how are those relative permeabilities model? How do you need expressions for them? Uh, once you know them, uh, then you can compute your water velocity and your oil velocity. But how can you model those? Uh, well, first of all, we need to know something about conate water saturation. What's that? Well, uh, no matter how hard you will press, you won't get all water out. Some water may be left in some small uh, spaces. And this fraction is called the coronate water saturation. If your water saturation is below that, your water will not flow anymore. Uh, and this can be modeled setting KRW at that point to zero. You have something similar for oil. No matter how hard you press, you can't get, out, can't get all oil out. Uh, so if your oil, sat oil saturation is be below the residual oil saturation, your relative permeability of oil is zero. Okay, so the saturations of interest are between SWC, conate water, and 1 minus OR. Usually SWC is about 0.1 and OR is also about 0.1. So the real saturations of interest are then between 0.1 and 0.9. So what you often do is that you normalize. You, compute, uh, you use a normalized saturation, which is SW minus SWC divided by 1 minus SOR minus SWC. So what happens then if SW equals SWC, uh, uh, your normalized saturation is at zero, and if you are at one minus SOR, your normalized saturation is at one. So now your normalized saturation is 90 between zero and one, and if you are in the case where SOR and SWC are zero, then those all drop out and your normalized saturation is just your normal one. So we often use this normalized saturation to express our rel perms. So, what do we get? Well, what we want is that KRW there has to be some increasing function of SW, because if you have more water in there, uh, the contribution of your water flow will be higher. Uh, uh, and so the, the, those other terms uh, are the same. So, uh, that means if you are increasing your SW, you also want an increase in KRW. So, how is it modeled? by some constant KRW0, uh, endpoint, which is called the endpoint mobility, times some SW to some power. You use some power law, NW, where NW is uh, one or bigger. So linearly increasing, or like 
like a parabola or something like that. You can do something similar for your uh, oil saturation. Then you need an SO of an 1 minus SW normalized here. And you usually use an other exponent, NO, to model the relative permeability of oil. And now, using those rel relative permeabilities, you can nicely express your velocities of your water phase and your oil phase in terms of uh, your saturations locally, viscosities usually constant, and your pressure gradients.